Welcome to the BioWhisperer channel. Our topic today is on a perspective overview of the sequencing by synthesis which is important to advancing our understanding of genomic sciences in the past decade. The principle of sequencing by synthesis will be discussed which is used widely in the first generation and second or next generation sequencing applications. All measurements have errors, and the reasons why these errors exist depend on the technology. Sequencing errors typically occur in approximately 0.1 to 1% of bases sequenced. Such errors are more common in reads with poor quality bases where sequences misinterpret the signal or when the wrong nucleotide is incorporated. Additional errors, such as polymerase bias and incorporation errors, may be introduced during sample preparation, amplification, or library preparation stages. I would thank you for helping to share your love for this science channel by clicking the like button and subscribe for future updates. Myself and my team of fellow retired educators, Dr. Biotech Whisperer's team of four curators including Dr. Al, will love to hear your comments and suggestions for future topics. With that out of the way, let's continue the discussion. Sanger sequencing, also known as the chain termination method, is a method for determining the nucleotide sequence of DNA. Sanger sequencing can be performed manually or by an automated fashion via sequencing machine. There are three main steps to Sanger sequencing. The first being the DNA sequence for chain termination PCR is labeled with fluorescent chain terminating DDNTPs which are randomly added. This involves using four reaction mixtures each mixed with the normal DNTPs as well as the chain terminating didioxy NTPs. We typically mix a low ratio of chain terminating DDNTPs in with the normal DNTPs in the PCR reaction. Since DDNTPs lack the 3' hydroxyl group required for phosphodiester bond formation, therefore, when DNA polymerase incorporates a DDNTP at random, extension ceases. The result of chain termination PCR is millions to billions of oligonucleotide copies of the DNA sequence of interest, terminated at a random lengths by 5' DDNTPs. Size separation is then carried out using gel electrophoresis. Since DNA is negatively charged, so the oligonucleotides will be pulled toward the positive electrode on the opposite side of the gel. Because all DNA fragments have the same charge per unit of mass, the speed at which the oligonucleotides move will be determined only by size. The smaller a fragment is, the less friction it will experience as it moves through the gel, and the faster it will move. The last step involves reading the gel to determine the sequence of the input DNA. In automated Sanger sequencing, a computer reads each band of the capillary gel, in order, using fluorescence to call the identity of each terminal DDNTP. In short, a laser excites the fluorescent tags in each band, and a computer detects the resulting light emitted. What is sequencing by synthesis all about? Sequencing by synthesis takes advantage of the fact that DNA strands split apart for mitosis and each strand is copied with the addition of DNTPs. Using didioxy chain terminating DDNTPs halt the replication of the DNA strand. Incorporation of four fluorescent labeled NTPs helped automate the process where the readout from the capillary gel electrophoresis is facilitated by laser scanning that automate the readouts. Sanger sequencing is not without its limitations. Given that the principle of red limitation error rate against length of strand. For example when the sequencer is processing 700 vs 701 base pairs compared to 1000 vs 1001 base pairs. Since error rates averages at around 0.1 to 1% of bases sequenced, a longer strand does have a higher error rate attributed. As such, sequences below 700 base pairs would be optimal for capturing low error rates. On its own, Sanger sequencing is low throughput due to slow mass measuring process which is also time consuming. Second generation sequencing, pioneered by Illumina, adopts a sequencing procedure that massively parallelizes the process, dramatically increasing the throughput while decreasing the price. What is meant by parallelization is that several synthesis experiments are being run at the same instance. Each of many template strands is anchored on a chip, and only DDNTPs with fluorescent tags are available during the synthesis procedure, no DNTPs. Each type of DDNTP is tagged such that it emits a different wavelength or color. Since DDNTPs halt synthesis, the synthesis of new strands are synced. 
all new strands are the same length at the end of each synthesis cycle, at which point a picture of the chip is taken. These pictures are then analyzed by base caller software to identify or call the complementary nucleotides. The DNA attaches to the flow cell via complementary sequences. The strand bends over and attaches to a second oligo forming a bridge. A polymerase synthesizes the reverse strand. The two strands release and straighten. Each forms a new bridge, bridge amplification. The result is a cluster of DNA forward and reverse strands clones. Here is a quick look at the complementary sequences within the DNA insert that is important in the formation of the bridge amplication within the flow cell. Bridge amplication yields a high number of clusters within the flow cell for good loading of the flow cell. What it means as a result is a full run of two flow cell sequencing in parallel may yield approximately 600 gigabytes of data. During sequencing, the polonies on the flow cell are read one nucleotide at a time in repetitive cycles. During these cycles, fluorescently labeled DNTPs are incorporated into the growing DNA chain. To override the chain termination, Illumina sequencing uses reversible termination. The sequencing process introduces an enzyme which can turn a DDNTP into a regular DNTP after it has bound, allowing the synthesis reactions to continue instead of being permanently halted. In order to guarantee that enough light is emitted such that DDNTP signals are detectable, each of the template strands are cloned, resulting in clusters of the same strand being synthesized in unison. Because of reversible termination, Illumina sequencing removes the need to measure masses. In contrast to the gel electrophoresis procedure required for Sanger sequencing above, Illumina sequencing can sequence billions of template strands simultaneously, which greatly increases the throughput. A quick summary thus far. Illumina Solexa sequencing technology is deployed in the Illumina Genome Analyzer which is a high-throughput, short-read, massively parallel sequencing platform. The Illumina Solexa sequencing technology uses sequencing by synthesis on an 8-channel flowchill to produce more than 10 million reads per channel with read lengths up to 100 base pair. Individual fragments of a genomic DNA library are amplified on a flowchill via bridge PCR to generate clusters of identical fragments. Reversible terminator nucleotides are used in sequencing allowing for the reading of one base per sequencing cycle per cluster. Errors in Illumina sequencing arise due to time steps where no DDNTP attaches to some sequence and hence the same base is read twice. Additionally, DNTPs still exist in solution, and therefore occasionally a DNTP rather than a DDNTP may be attached to a strand being synthesized. The DNA polymerase then continues synthesis until it adds a different DDNTP. In addition, DNA polymerases, which are known to have biases towards specific DNA templates are used during the amplification processes. This platform enables many applications, including whole genome resequencing, transcriptomy sequencing, gene expression profiling, and epigenomic sequencing. In a nutshell, sequencing by synthesis is used in the first and second generation sequencing platforms. This works in three basic steps, amplify, sequence, and analyze. The process begins with purified DNA. The DNA is fragmented and adapters are added that contain segments that act as reference points during amplification, sequencing, and analysis. This sequencing method is based on reversible dye terminators that enable the identification of single nucleotides as they are washed over DNA strands. These platforms are automated where a computer determines what base was added by the wavelength of the fluorescent tag and records it for every spot on the chip. After each round, Non-incorporated molecules are washed away. It can also be used for whole genome and region sequencing, transcriptomy analysis, metagenomics, small RNA discovery, methylation profiling, and genome-wide protein nucleic acid interaction analysis. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please smash the like button and subscribe to this channel for future updates.